you got, you know, this certain attitude, certain attitude that actually is not so good for your life, not only in the ring, but also outside of the ring. And I believe it's going to be a good lesson for you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, He's world champion by talking, but uh, by trash talking. David's got a hard fight, uphill battle. The fight of the year is almost here. It's Hay's toughest test yet, and he knows it could define him. Oh, this, this is everything to me, you know, what, all, all the stuff I've done at Cruiserweight, you know, obviously going to beat the seven foot two, Nikolai Valuo, um, winning the WBA strap. It all comes down to this, you know, all that gets sort of forgotten in history if this doesn't go right. So I've got to go out there and I've got to make a statement and prove to the world that, you know, I am the number one heavyweight on the planet. We get the inside track from the Klitschko camp. He's wearing 20 ounce gloves and he hits me and I still have a headache for four days. You know what I mean? What happens when he hits you with 10 ounce gloves? Uh, you end up in the hospital. And we hear from a man who's beaten a Klitschko before. Klitschko's been beaten. He's been stopped. They've waved it off. And Lewis is celebrating, punching his chest, saying, I'm the man. First 30 seconds, just run at him and try and hit him on his chin. Try and catch him while he's trying to throw a punch at you. Five Live Boxing. I know what to expect. I know what to do. I'm the true heavyweight. And at the end of the final 12th round, I will knock him out. Yes, at seven minutes past nine, I'm Matt Dawson and this is Five Live Boxing. We really are looking forward to this biggest heavyweight fight, maybe for a decade. Britain's David Hay against the giant Ukrainian Vladimir Klitschko for the Championship of the World in Hamburg on Saturday night. I have got a very excited Steve Bunce rocking in his chair in anticipation for this weekend, Buncey. That was the finest four or five minute preview we've ever had on the Boxing Hour. We've been going since September 2004. I feel like, I'm not saying we should go now, but that was fantastic stuff. Oh, Matt, trust me. You're feeling right up for it. It's oh, got you in the mood. We're, we're, we're just here. Are you going, actually? Are you go, are you I'm, fl I'm flying out in the morning to be with my friends out there. Oh, right. Well, someone who's been there pretty much all week soaking up the atmosphere, Mike Costello. Evening, Mike. Hello, Matt. What's it been like? Oh, this has got all the ingredients of a massive fight, Mac. The abuse... The insults, the bragging, the boasting, the difference of opinion about who's going to win the fight. And there's a real crackle in the room when the two men are together, as they have been twice this week at the final head-to-head -head press conference. And then again yesterday at the media workouts, which were held in a car showroom in the centre of town. And what's unusual about fights in Germany is that the final head-to-head -head press conference, unlike in Vegas when it's held on a Wednesday or in Britain for the big fights, we hold them on a Thursday. Over here, the final head-to-head -head press conference is held on a Monday and what that means is the momentum picks up much earlier than usual and Hay in particular really cranked it up at the start of the week and when you consider that Klitschko's fights in the past have barely created a ripple outside of Germany you start to understand how much Hay has brought to this occasion even before the first bell. So come on, Buncey, is, is cranking it up, winding Klitschko up, is that the way to go? Well, uh, listen, we'll go into that in a bit more detail. I think it is, without a doubt, the way to go. And I think it's, this all started in a photographic studio in the West End of London in June of 2008. We'll, we'll, we'll tell the full story. Uh, Mike mentioned there just how, how big this event is. And let's look at it. David Hay has sold out his last three fights. They've been massive. They've done an enormous pay-per-view business. He's made millions from them. But that's nothing compared to Vladimir Klitschko's last three fights. The three have been in football stadiums. 155,000 people have bought tickets for his last three fights. This will have 60,000 more. And wait for it, 35 million German people, German TV people have turned on and watched him. He's had on average an audience share of 50%. That means 50% of the German population on on those three Saturday nights have been tuned in to watch Klitschko. Now that's those are staggering figures in any sport in any country in the world. Trust me, if there was an American that could do that, he would be the most famous athlete. He'd be the most famous human being in the world. Now, with those type of stats, Mike, you would have said that all the pressure is on the two fighters. But actually, the third man, the referee, the guy in the middle, is taking a load of flack as well. Yes, he is. And he's going to be under immense pressure. If it is Gino Rodriguez, uh, a veteran referee from Chicago, who's been the third man 
in four of Vladimir Klitschko's fights in the past. He's known to British fighters as well. He's refereed a couple of Joe Calzaghe's fights. Nassim Hamid, he was also referee for a big showdown between Nigel Benn and Steve Collins back in 1996. So he's been around for a long time, done a lot of big fights. But Adam Booth told me this week that he counted 32 fouls committed by Klitschko in the first five rounds of one of the fights that <laughs> Rodriguez refereed in. And that's what he's not happy about. They claim also that the WBA, the World Boxing Association, and that's the belt that David holds, they say that the WBA are not happy either. Now, the Klitschko camp, in response, say that the WBA have actually approved the appointment of Rodriguez in writing. But what it's done, and maybe this is a, a bit of Adam Booth playing the Sir Alex Ferguson role with referees here, it has thrown spotlight on the issue. The referee will be very closely monitored now as to how he deals with this persistent holding that Klitschko does. You know, his style has been dismissed in the States as jab and grab. He throws a punch, and then if it doesn't land and sometimes even if it does he just jumps in and grabs hold of his opponent and time and time again he's been allowed to do that with impunity and that's why Adam Booth and of course David Hay are looking for a real strong character here Saturday night. Mike you imagine the very first clinch Adam Booth is going to be like Mickey Duff like Angelo Dundee would have been, like Lou Duva would have been, like Manny Stewart would have been during his street heyday, he's going to be up standing on the ring apron. The fight could be 10 seconds, 20 seconds old, old and, if the, and, if, and if Gino hasn't warned Klitschko, Adam Booth will be up screaming, the fans will be up screaming. You're absolutely right. He's outdone Ferguson here, the dark lord Adam Booth. He's put him right on the back and foot. And it's, it's so important, Steve, because, you know, as Matt said, we're going to be hearing later on from Lennox Lewis. I went to see him at a hotel here in Hamburg this morning, and he was talking talking also about when he fought Vitali Klitschko. We heard a clip of the commentary of the end of the fight there. And he said at one stage during the fight, he caught Klitschko with a heavy right hand. And Klitschko was hurt and stumbled into him. And he really felt the full force of the weight of Klitschko. And he said that if that had been happening all through the fight, if at that stage of his career, Vitali Klitschko had been clever enough mm. to do that kind of thing all the way through the fight, it would have been really difficult. Now, imagine Lennox Lewis is a massive, was a massive heavyweight. David Hay is not as big as him and that's why it really is a very crucial factor in this fight and in the build-up to it. Mike, I know uh, I know Hamburg pretty well, actually. My missus is from Hamburg. Very tranquil place. Lots mm. of sailing, lots of you know, beautiful bars and, and, and pedestrianised streets. You know what I mean? It's quite nice. But all of a sudden, you've got mayhem down in Hamburg. Now, you've not been just sort of cruising around all week. You've been spending time with David Hay. What sort of mood has he been in? Well, what's fascinating about David Hay and the build-up to the fight, and we're going to talk to George Groves in a short while, who had his own great win just recently and who's been part of the Haymaker camp for a long time, so he'll give us an insight too. But it's fascinating to watch David during a fight week and how he slips in and out of different characters with such impressive ease. He can be abusive and insulting as he was at the press conference this week. And in that sense, after a subdued performance at the initial press conference mm. here a couple of months ago, he was back to his more recognisable form. But look, he knows how much to give of himself in terms of mental energy, how much to hold back. Fight week now brings situations that he's well used to. And he told me he has no particular routine. I think I just sort of go with the flow, you know, your hotel's always different, um, your food's always different, so um, I'm sort of take, take it as it comes really, uh, nothing too crazy, just sort of fine tuning some sort of choreographed uh, moves that myself and Adam Booth have been drilling for the last few months and um, yeah, I'm just, just, just go, going through the motions at the moment, did the press, you know, head-to-head um, -head press conference, both got to have our say, it was, got pretty heated, got pretty heated up there, there was some uh, strong words passed back and forth. Um, but we are, I'm, in, I'm in a good place. Um, you know, Vladimir looks rather wound up. I've never, he's never, he's never, started, never cussed me in the past. But this time round, he was effing and blinding, which was, which was nice. I've definitely got him out of his comfort zone. And his trainer Emmanuel Stewart oh, said he's more charged up yeah. than ever before. What exactly. did you read into that? I'm great. You know, everything I've done's worked perfectly. You know, even Emmanuel Stewart, um, he he was real riled up as well. He got he got really animated and had to sort of take a back seat as time went on in the in the press conference. So the, the whole team seems rattled, and uh, he's definitely Vladimir is going to get rattled uh, on Saturday night for sure. As far as the venue is concerned on Saturday night, David, some boxers, a lot of sports performers, 
in a number of sports, like to become familiar with the venue? I know you've been there for a press conference, but will you go there this week before mm-hmm. Saturday night? No, no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really too bothered about that. You know, as long as there's a ring, I think Adam will go to the ring before, have a little bounce around the ring, let me know whether it's a tight ring or a soft ring, the size, and that's all I need. You know, once, once I'm in the zone, a ring's a ring. The outside, uh, the outside then. Uh, things don't affect me one one bit. You know, as long as as long as Vladimir is there, I'm I'm happy. You know, I know what I need to do to beat him, and um, I'm I'm looking forward to a tremendous fight. And when for you does the period of getting deep into that zone start, or has it already started now that you're here? Um, I've been in I've been in the zone um, mentally for a while. You know, I don't get all hyped up and uh, get my adrenaline flow or anything like that. When I say I'm in the zone, I mean I'm focusing on training, making sure that you know. My training is going perfect. That's the most important thing for me. Um, I don't mentally gear up to fight until you know I'm at the at, at, in the change room warming up for the fight. And even then, I still keep a cap on it. It's only till I get in the ring and then Vladimir gets in the ring to that till I true do my tr- adrenaline truly starts pumping. Um, so I'm, I don't waste any unnecessary energy. I still was. I'm, I'm upstairs now watching the movie. Got my pals here. Everyone's everyone's relaxing. Everyone's taking it easy. And we just we, everyone's here just to enjoy the occasion. This is my this is my time to become the undisputed champ. And um, every, everyone's here to celebrate that. Now, you stopped sparring some time ago, earlier than most fighters normally would mm. in the build-up to a big fight. What's the thinking behind that? Um, I've always stopped sparring. A lot of people have made, made a big issue about that. A lot of sparring. I know Carl Froch, for instance, spars I think up to a week, uh, maybe less than a week before his fight. Um, I've, always, I've always stopped. You know, I see that the closest I'd spar to a fight would probably be two weeks two and a half weeks um, this fight I think we stopped around three weeks um, I was getting everything off in the gym in the gym in sparring that I wanted to get off in the fight um, we had great sparring partners we had the big David Price from Liverpool you know great prospect unbeaten we had a uh, Devontae Wilder another unbeaten uh, 16 fights 16 knockouts from coming from America Calvin Price um, another unbeaten American and um, Robert Hellenius another you know heavyweight um, a contender, you know, unbeaten contender. So all the guys I was sparring with were unbeaten. All of them were over six foot seven. All of them were giving me tremendous work. And I was, wor- and what I need to do in this fight, I was getting it off perfectly. So Adam said, "What's the point of just doing the same thing over and over again? You've got it. So unless you work on some other stuff." So we just worked a lot more on conditioning, and um, and timing, and speed, and, and 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 I feel great. There's been talk, David, of uh, a row about who the referee might be. Why is that important? Um, I, I haven't got involved in that, to be honest. I think uh, Adam's in charge of uh, who the officials are for the night. You know, I've always just wanted my, my whole philosophy behind having a, re- uh, uh, a referee and judges are that as long as they're fair, as long as they've, they've proved in the past that they're fair, um, as long as they're not affiliated uh, to one fighter in any way, shape or form, including myself. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to have a British referee in there, you know, seeing though I'm British and he's, uh, I think, neutral, neutral judges. I think it's fair and people from different governing bodies, a lot of governing bodies here, WBA, WBC, WBO, uh, IBF, you know, there's, there's a lot of different um, a lot of different belts, a lot of different governing bodies. So yeah, if you have one, one, one official from each, then I think, I think that would be fair. As long as both, both sides agree who they are, we'll, uh, we'll move on from there. But I know there's been a bit of a back and forth about who, uh, who, who the judges are and who the referee is, but I'm, I'm not letting that bother me whatsoever. I know, I know Adam's going to make the right decisions, whatever they are. And I'm gonna, I, I, can't, I do what I do in the ring, and Adam does what, he's, what happens outside the ring. And finally, David, can you just sum up to me what this means? Because you've done so much in your career, but it's highly likely, as is the case for Vladimir Klitschko, that you'll be remembered by Saturday night's yeah. result. Oh, this, this is everything to me. You know, what, all, all the stuff I've done at cruiserweight, even the stuff prior at heavyweight. You know, obviously going to beat the seven foot two Nikolai Valuev, um, winning the WBA strap. Um, it all comes down to this, you know, all that sort of uh, gets sort of forgotten in history if this doesn't go right. So I've got to go out there and I've got to make a statement and prove to the world that, you know, I am the number one heavyweight on the planet. You know, I know I, I know I am, but there are many people who don't believe that and many people who believe Vladimir is superior to me and that he will beat me on Saturday night. And it's my, it's my opportunity now to prove to the world that that's not the case. You've shown in the past that when the stakes are highest, mm. you produce your best. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I've, I've always risen to the occasion, and this and Saturday night is no, no, no exception to that. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Mike Costello about that. And just bear with me, Mike, for two seconds. 